here is another here is another bump seen on the skin it looks like perhaps the overlying epidermis is normal so you would suspect that whatever this tumor is may be present deeper in the dermis so let's take a microscopic section through it and uh, let's look at it here we have the overlying epidermis which you could see as we suspected is intact and in the dermis and extending deep into the dermis into the subcutaneous fat is a large nodule and you can see that this large nodule has a lot of slit like spaces in it and in many of the slit like spaces if not no, most you see they are filled with red blood cells so you are already suspecting that this is a vascular tumor furthermore if you look uh, closely within these slit like spaces that contain blood cells you will notice that they are endothelial lined so now you have the perfectly correct diagnosis that this is a vascular tumor because it's very well defined as you could see up here you suspect it's benign but in addition there is a second type of cell besides these little endothelial lined spaces they don't look quite like the fibroblasts that you see here they are round cells and it's the majority of cells that you see here and the majority of the cells you see here and these are called glomus cells and for this reason this benign vascular tumor is a glomus tumor uh, it occurs uh, usually in the uh, lower in the extremities hands fingers underneath the nails distal extremities they can be very painful they're benign uh, some people would like to call these paragangliomas now because uh, they're not just purely little vascular endothelial tumors. Some people feel that these gloma cells may have uh, some kind of neural uh, origin. So it doesn't matter what they call them. What does matter is that it's one of these lesions in pathology, which when you see, you instantly know the diagnosis because it has these endothelial spaces and these round gloma cells around them. Totally benign. Uh, and this is a glomus tumor. Thank you very much.